Do you remember that cult that went kind of viral on TikTok a few years ago? So sometimes people, when I mention that I don't see races, um, I don't see gender, some people tell me that that is a white privileged thing for me to say. And I think telling somebody that they're white privilege is a racist thing to say because you're calling me a color that I don't define myself with. This community, which is known as The Garden, is actually alive and well. Race is done. And there's a documentary series about it called The Garden, Cult or Commune. I watched it on Max, but it's also on Discovery Plus. The reality is becoming more and more clear. Society needs to be burnt to ashes. Does anyone actually have Discovery Plus? That's a serious question. In this video, I am going to sort of summarize the six part documentary series and we'll be asking the question, is the garden a cult or a commune? Because spoiler alert, the documentary leaves that rather open-ended. Before we dive deep into the world of the garden, I'm Misty, welcome to my channel, Misty Cubed, where we talk about cult-like things, scams, real housewives, manifesting, you know, the basics. So subscribe to my channel if you're interested in any of that and watch till the end of this video to hear my thoughts on whether or not the garden is actually a cult. Of course, I'll be discussing my opinions that arose through viewing the documentary series, but I'll also be using the bite model in order to really give a more thoughtful answer as to if the garden is a cult or not. I'm gonna have to break eye contact really quick while I read off of my script. If you don't know, the bite model of authoritarian control was developed by cult expert Dr. Stephen Hawson and is used to describe cults specific methods to recruit and maintain control over people. BITE stands for behavior, information, thought, and emotional control. While I have what you could call a special interest in cults, I don't take those accusations lightly, so I definitely wanted to include legitimate research in discussing this topic. If you know anything about cults, Dr. Stephen Hassan is the GOAT. He is really a pioneer of this field. CC Suarez did an interview with him. Definitely a celebrity in the space, but most importantly, he's helped so many people deprogram from cults and controlling environments. We have to know the warning signs because people think that they're so immune because they're like, I would never join these hippies in the middle of the woods, but maybe it's a, a romantic relationship. Maybe it's a familial relationship. Maybe it's a job. High control situations exist in many ways. It's important to recognize the signs and be able to advocate for yourself and for your loved ones. We're gonna talk about this later, but I wanna get into the documentary series, so let's go. The opening screen reads, the garden is an off-grid commune founded in Tennessee in 2009. It was accused of being a cult after suspicious social media posts. Now the garden seeks to rehabilitate its image and expand into a new property in Missouri. It is actively seeking new members. There's so much love here. It's it's just beautiful. This is our like temporary kitchen that we're doing right now. Okay. We've been here like eight days or something. Yeah, a little bit. Blend on in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get we're... it too. Okay, so what we doing? So the first main character we meet is Tyler Milligan. He's a 36 year old veteran. He's a prepper. In other words, he's a survivalist. He wants to both learn and teach about off grid living because he already is pretty experienced in that. And that's for what he sees as this inevitable crash of society. Most importantly, he's a prospective garden member. Six days. <laughs> you fit right in with everybody. You I'll take that as a compliment. I'll take that as a compliment. <laughs> He's married to a lovely little lady named Heather. She initially decides to stay home while Tyler goes on this experience. So at the garden, they allow prospective members to stay for 10 days, and it's a trial to see if they're a good fit for the community. Then the whole group votes unanimously in what they call a council on whether or not they would like to invite the person to stay on the commune, in the commune. If the group feels uncomfortable, then the group can decide that visitor is not the best fit at this time. 10 seconds of silence to consent on accepting visitors for 10 days total. 
they conduct every single vote in this manner so everything has to be unanimous once everyone's on the same page there will be 10 seconds of silence and the measure or whatever the situation is will be passed or denied now let's listen to one of the founders of the garden patrick 15 years ago me and my friend tim we started dreaming about i don't know living more free you know, we both hitchhiked and traveled and we found this area, we built a tool shed, built an outhouse, grow our own food, collect our own water, use our own fuel sources. And ever since then, it's been like kind of growing exponentially. I think his intentions are pure and he's been pretty successful and realistic about communal living and his endeavors through trial and error, you know, just based on a gut feeling and also the fact that they're open to a documentary crew. I didn't initially or ever get like a bad feeling about Patrick, just, just to be honest. In me saying that, I do want to also add a block of salt, okay? Because we all know, like, you never really know what someone is like. It's a six part documentary series. You don't see a ton of him. You don't see these people in their daily lives. So you can only take things at face value so much. That being said, I actually agree with a lot of his beliefs about society and communal living. Naraya is a new member of the garden. Her intentions seem pure and she seems ready to be a contributing member of their community. So I can do haircuts for them. I brought this sink to do scalp massages for people. This is for the shampoo chair. Biodegradable glitter. We're gonna do some Brazilians for tick prevention is what I was thinking. We'll see who's gonna be down for that. It's just what I can bring. This is what I bring as an offering to, to share with community. It's gonna be fun. Unfortunately for her, the community is very suspicious of her because she, well, the main reason is that she's filming like a lot and she explains she likes to document things, but I admit it is a little, a little weird. Like even outside of this situation, I would be like, can you stop like filming me all the time? I don't like that. Narayas just wants to follow me as we do the tour. It's like it's so weird. If anyone was following, it would make me feel uncomfortable. Narayas is a newcomer. And I don't know what she was doing. Yeah, can you just leave me alone? The main person she's butting heads with is Tree. And I would also say she butts heads with Tree's wife, Julia. Tree and Julia are a married couple who are prominently featured in the documentary because they somewhat serve as leaders in the community. Even though they deny this hierarchy, they are trusted members of the community. They are, without saying leader, they're people that the rest of the group feels they can go to for instruction. There you go. <laughs> You're trying to put me in a position of leadership. This is a community of people. I just yeah. notice that people look up to you more than others. That's the way because I've got it. Because I'm a good person. I'm cool. Like, people like me. So I mentioned how the garden became pretty viral on TikTok a few years ago. Well, Tree was the main person that I saw, at least at the time, and who was, I think, the voice that ultimately drew in a lot of new members. However, Tree was also the recipient of a lot of accusations and, of course, the inevitable online bullying that comes with going viral and being a part of a community that comes off as kind of culty. So Tree is straight up paranoid. He does not even deny it because it's more than just backlash they experience on social media. He's paranoid because they're living their life alternatively, living off of the land off grid without this government supervision that's so present in our on grid lives. And truthfully, I, I would be wary of people as well. Like I'm a paranoid person, but like if anyone's an FBI agent, it's her, you know? I don't even know if I should talk about this on camera, but like, come on, like we're like literally like creating a show about a bunch of anarchists trying to create a new world. Trust me, I don't think someone's just gonna let that slide. And I, I don't know if it's you guys and you're gonna us up. I kind of feel like it's a little bit misdirected. Um, when it comes to Naraya, but I'll go into that later. So ultimately Naraya is voted out of the group because her issues with Tree escalated to a point where he actually snatched her phone and she called the police. 
and like was accusing them of being a cult and stuff. So that council vote was very stressful and emotional, but ultimately everyone kind of decided like, your presence here unfortunately is causing a rift in our community for whatever reason, you just need to go. I'm asking Naraya to leave and consent by 10 seconds of silence. It's 10 That's seconds 10 of seconds. silence. That's 10 seconds. Uh, the community's asking you to leave. Everyone has been seen and heard. Mark that in the universe. I've known people like Naraya. They have a really powerful energy, but it, ru it rubs people the wrong way. And when you're building an intentional community, like, it's kind of like choosing your friends in a sense. You know, they realized like, hey, this person is not vibing well. Um, we have to keep the peace and she just needs to move on. It's things like that when it comes to communal living where there's this filter that can protect people from potential issues that escalate to violence or danger. And so part of that is being extremely picky about who they let in because they can be. It's kind of like living in a giant house with a bunch of roommates. Just because somebody's not getting along with people and they kick them out, doesn't mean that the other people in the house are a cult. It just means that the person they kicked out was causing problems and they're just cutting the issue off at the bud. So like I said, it was a difficult vote. A lot of people did like Naraya, but they all eventually came to that consensus and you know, it is what it is. Another prospective member of the garden is Tyler. Yes, it's a different Tyler though. His nickname eventually, once he gets to the garden, is Oak. So I'm gonna be referring to him as Oak for the duration of this video. Oak is a father of four and like Tyler, he's also a prepper. I might be not in the best shape that I used to be. I feel heavy, I feel kind of mopey. I gotta get my old self back. Because this world's going to hell in a handbasket in a hurry. There are a few other prospective garden members who are featured, including Sheila, who's also a prepper. Jessica, who is portrayed as this materialistic valley girl, and Ricky. So I'm just gonna summarize Oak's situation really quick. In his own words, he's really out of shape, he has a back injury, and because of this, he can't do much physical labor which is important because they're all on this new property in Missouri trying to get this new commune built up. So they are working very hard every day. But the people at the garden are not ableist. You know, they're not judging him for being the way that he is. The problem is more to do with his attitude. Even with a back injury, Oak could bond with the community. He could keep up a positive attitude. He could offer to help in other ways, but instead he's literally sitting there like a bump on a log. Like not saying anything, being a sourpuss, and just assuming that everyone hates him. Because it's true, he is a little bit different than a lot of the members. Oak is more of like, in terms of politics in the US, he's like a right-wing conservative type of guy, if you know what I'm saying. And most people at the garden are hippies. <laughs> I think there are a lot of people with libertarian beliefs, you know, that would be considered right-wing. I, you know, you can only assume it is a diverse community. The problem is that Oak was being judgmental of others and Ultimately, that was like being projected back at him because you could really see that he was the root of a lot of the issues that ultimately rose up. He ended up in a few disagreements with a few different people. So it's kind of like, that's a sign that you're not a good fit. So he ultimately did decide to leave. He accused them of being culty, but I think, like I said, he was just really judgmental of their lifestyle, even though they were being so nice to him and like trying to help him. So... I don't fuck with Oak, you know, I hope he gets healthy, like that was his goal for his daughters and his wife, but like, dude, <laughs> fix your attitude, that's all I'm gonna say. Oh, also he kept saying things along the lines of like, he wants to learn things here and bring them back to my family, so it really seemed like he was exploiting their labor like the labor of the people at the garden and their knowledge without actually respecting their work 
or their purpose as a commune. You can't just expect to be best friends as soon as we, you meet. That's some weird indoctrinating cult. We're not some indoctrinating cult. They're not as peace loving and inviting as they say they are. That's it's a crock of because if you're in a clique and you have outsiders, this is the way do things. If you don't like it, then you're going to be treated differently. That is why you are labeled and stamped cult. It's like being a tourist somewhere and then judging people for how they're living. It's like you are here to like try to learn from them, yet you're acting like they owe you something. Like they were having basic conversations. They were telling him like, dude, you can't expect to be best friends with everyone. <laughs> And he's like, yeah, but nobody's being nice to me. It's like, oh my God, people were being, so it's on camera. It's on camera. People were, people were being so nice to him. Um, that being said though, there was an interesting scene from Oak's early days, the promising days, where Tree was teaching him about compost and a simple question from Oak highlighted Tree's insecurities and just his general agitated nature. So let's watch. And we have microbes all over this forest. Let me first... back you up one second so I'm clarify. I have an idea what you're talking about when you're saying microbes, but yeah. kind of give me a better vision of what microbes are. I don't know. Can't. That's a biological term. I know. I failed in biology. I, several I didn't times. do biology. <laughs> cool. Way to make me feel like. Oh, I'm just asking. I mean, yeah. it's an element. Cool. Sorry if I'm giving you too much. I'm just joking. Yeah, whatever. By the way, microbes are just microscopic organisms, also known as microorganisms. They're the little like one cell or cluster cell organisms that like it breaks down the organic material. Anyway, I think you'll agree with me that was a really weird scene because I feel like Tree just could have Googled it or like laughed it off and, and been like, you know, I think it's this, but honestly, I don't know, ha ha ha. There's no reason to be embarrassed is what I'm saying. Like it just kind of makes me wonder, maybe Tree's not very humble. That being said, Tree is a very passionate person. Like I said, there's only so much you can know from watching people in a documentary series. It's just a snippet, but Tree just gets really elevated. Like he takes it there <laughs> and it's like, take, take it down a notch. like. It's fine. So anyway, Oak is gone. Now Tyler's wife, Heather, who I mentioned in the beginning, actually shows up to the garden and surprises Tyler in misery. He didn't have service and so they couldn't get in touch with each other and they were both kind of freaking out. So it was actually a really sweet reunion. They're clearly super into each other and are just, you know, they're just that like cool, kind of open mid thirties couple. And even though she didn't want to initially go to the garden, she ends up having a really good time integrating super well into the lifestyle. And it, yeah, it was cool to see. So the time has come for a council vote on Tyler. It is his 10th day and they decide to invite him to stay, which was really exciting. He was super happy. Unlike Oak, Tyler really was there to learn, but he was also there to teach and to give them this resource of knowledge. But I didn't sense that it was from a place of arrogance. I sensed it was from a place of, listen, I'm scared what's going on in this world and we need to stick together and teach each other these things. You saw a lot of that, which was pretty beautiful because a lot of that shit's passed down through oral history. Those are the things that we're losing in our modern society. This community education and shared knowledge so there's this really cool scene that I love and it's a group of prospective garden members and current members. They go dumpster diving together in town, but the prospective members were just surprisingly open to it. And when they scored something that was really good, they were like super excited and it just looked like a really fun day of bonding, honestly. And they're um, pork rinds. Oh wait. Ew. 
There's plenty still. Trying to scavenge what we can for living in dumpsters. <laughs> Come here, darlings. We're able to find some good things and some bad things. But at the same time, you have to taste it to see if it's good or not. So it's like Russian roulette. <laughs> First time for everything. Yeah. You know, you have these people from like all these different walks of life diving in dumpsters for like snacks together. And it was just heartwarming. It was, it's like a community thing. It was also sad to be reminded of how much goes to waste at like grocery stores and fucking everywhere. But it was just a beautiful bonding experience for their community, I thought. At this point, another conflict arises. Tree, Julia, and a group of some other people want to throw a party. They've been working really hard every day to get this commune put together, and they just want to let loose for a night, but Patrick does not agree at all. Because I've been, I've been wanting to have like a time where we can like drink some wine and play music and dance, but I haven't wanted to keep the kids up. Right over here, maybe. I'm guessing that doesn't really line up with your vision. That's a fun thought, but not realistic. But that's not, it's not sustainable. You can't have a perpetual party. Living in the woods means that you can live however you can imagine, mm -hmm. because you're here on rural land where you can actually do pretty much whatever you want. I want to create spaces that are safe. safe. Um, we're safe like, for children, safe for recovering alcoholics. They do end up throwing the party, but it really puts a wedge specifically between tree and Patrick, and it's a wedge between Tree's ideology and Patrick's ideology as far as what they're seeking in a communal living situation. So their differences are really like being highlighted here. Okay, then there was this one scene that I was really eager to talk about because it was pretty concerning, but I'm so glad I was scrolling TikTok before I made this video because I found Jessica's TikTok and she attributes the creepiness, which I'll show you in a second. She attributes the creepiness to the editing. I'm just gonna play the TikTok. You'll see the scene in the TikTok and she'll talk about it. Okay, so this question has come up quite a bit. I'm so sorry for the delay in addressing it, but in short, the scene with myself, Tyler, and Heather at the water when they were both naked, um, and them proposing a threesome, literally never happened. For those of you who don't watch, I'm talking about this scene. Okay, and if you wanted to experiment with it, you can. We're open for you to just try it out. Just try it out. Okay. <laughs> no, I'm not saying, like, if, if you feel comfortable enough. Is this my initiation? Thank you, I appreciate your... It's so awkward. Yes. Basically, the editors are wildly good at their job. Props to them, I guess. They're also clearly males. Yeah, they basically just edited and chopped and screwed me having a different facial reaction to something else that was said. I don't know when he even asked about the experimenting. We think that he was possibly referring to asking if I wanted to experiment with edibles or something like that, or maybe like acro or something else completely different, and they made it seem like it was a proposition for a threesome. And yes, I do look uncomfortable, but in my defense, there was cameras and there were two naked people next to me, and they were asking me a lot of personal questions about like dating and stuff like that. So my uncomfortable facial expressions were probably reactions to those questions and not to Tyler and Heather. I feel like they're made to seem like this creepy praying couple, like praying on a new girl, but they are not like that at all. They're alone lovely couple and that never happened. Joke's on me because I should have expected nothing else from reality TV. Seeing that explanation just made me feel way better about Tyler and Heather. And honestly, it made me feel really bad for them too because I think it's super damaging the way they came off. Like they came off as kind of creepy and predatory. So shout out to Jessica for making that TikTok. I, I thought it was cool that she did that. Portraying them as taking their conversation with Jessica to that place in that way was not cool. And like Jessica said, I know it's reality TV, but it's like, come on, really? Like that, I just thought that was shitty. During counsel, Jessica is invited to stay after her 10 day trial. So she was super excited. However, it's at this point that the worst fear of many people unfortunately comes true. They are in Missouri after all. So a tornado shows up and the community is completely unprepared. Tyler is pissed because this whole time he's like we have to build a storm shelter we have to talk about this da, 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 da. but other people were like no we have to prioritize the kitchen and our garden and stuff other things thankfully the neighbors opened up their basement to the garden so everybody was fine some of their shit was fucked up at the commune but thankfully every individual was okay it was the reality check that ultimately pushed them to build a storm shelter so tyler was he was pissed, but then he was like, all right, we're moving forward. We're gonna do this. They ended up building a storm shelter from a shipping container, which was Tyler's idea. So that was cool. I think that's gonna save some lives. <laughs> Although hopefully 
God forbid they have another tornado situation, but again, Missouri. So after being invited to stay, Jessica actually reaches out to Naraya. They don't trust me because I wasn't scared to speak up. The excommunication of someone who has questions. Yeah. Yeah, it does kind of raise some red flags. I definitely feel like it has a lot of cult-like tendencies. You know, it's like, if you're gonna have a hierarchy, just say that you have a hierarchy. Like, tell people the truth of what they're walking into. There was something that was told to me on more than one basis around, like, being cautious with the food in the kitchen. Oh. Uh, my stomach has been kind of churning. Um, I don't know if it's from the food. I like Jessica, but one of the things about her that kind of rubbed me the wrong way is that in every interview she was talking about how she wanted to go and see if the garden was a cult or not. So in her eyes, I think she saw it as like, yeah, I'm going for this experience, but also I don't necessarily want to be involved in a cult. I, I want to see what it's about. But the way that it came off is like, She's just nosy. When she told this to Julia, Julia was understandably upset. She is doing her due diligence in talking to somebody who had a negative experience with the garden. Aww, my bunny is thumping. If you're not familiar with bunnies, they thump when they're mad. And my bunny was just, just thumping for like three minutes straight while I was filming. I just realized it was her. I thought it was the floor creaking. So we gotta wrap this up so I can give her the pets she deserves. So yeah, I just didn't feel like Jessica was being totally honest when she did that. But it's one of those gray areas type of things in life, you know? Like, I don't feel like Jessica's a bad person for doing that, it was just kinda like... So Naraya has a final encounter with the documentary crew and she says that she's been speaking to former members and has confirmed her belief that the garden is a cult. How long were you at the garden? About a year. Always some kind of drama going on. One girl bit a chunk out of another girl's face. What? Kidnappings. Like, yeah, that's it's not a safe place by any means. They forced me into a car at gunpoint, even though I was trying to leave the property at the time, and basically drove me out. I think it's definitely a cult. There is totally a hierarchy of power there. Patrick's at the top, and he puts whoever he trusts the most to run his property, and that person changes, he finds somebody new, and when that person changes, he finds somebody who wouldn't cycle mm. just continues. The more people I talk to, the deeper the hole gets. The conversation with Naraya really got to them because Sheila, Jessica, and Ricky end up leaving, which I kind of saw in the first place because Jessica, I just didn't get the feeling that this was like her long-term vision for her life. Sheila is Polly and her partners are back home and Ricky has kids and a family, so he, like, for all these people, I just was like, yeah, I didn't see them staying long term, but again, it was just kind of like, mm. I feel like they just wanted to learn and experience, but ultimately I feel like they did have a positive experience. Sheila specifically was really worried about the food when Naraya brought that up. She was literally like so freaked out. Among those who left were also two of the top dogs, Tree and Julia. Ultimately, I think they, but mostly Tree, just weren't aligned with the community as much anymore. They wanted to start their own that was just better aligned with their values, and it seemed like there was really no bad blood, but Julia was kind of, it seemed like she was split on that. You could tell part of her wanted to stay. The people on this land right now need a place to be able to raise their children. And what better place than here? And so I'm just coming to terms with that, and you know, this is not the space for me. Yeah, it's, it's hard when, like, you can see both sides, too, you know? And I'm, like, talking to Tree, and I'm like, yeah, I get that. And then I'm, like, talking to these other people, and I'm like, yeah, I get that. But you, like, can't make them see each other's sides. And then it's, like, nothing you can do, you know? And scene. That's the end of the series. Of course, I skimmed over some things, but I touched on all the major points. So let's look at the bite model and discuss where the garden fits into that. As far as behavior, I did not feel like there was any control of physical environment 
rigid rules. There were community rules, but I, I felt like they were rigid only in a sense that like a workplace or an apartment building would be. You know, like normal society rules, like this is where you go to the bathroom. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no rewards and punishments, dependence and obedience, nothing like that. There didn't seem to be any information, deception, propaganda, discouraging outside resources and access to information. Obviously they were able to reach out to Naraya. They have the internet. So this isn't like Scientology where they're like, don't Google us. Insider slash outsider doctrine. I think that that type of doctrine I really only felt that from people who felt that they were outsiders, like Naraya, like Oak, like the people that Naraya talked to. It's just one of those things I feel that the documentary crew, like they want things to be sensational. So I feel like if it was, if these sorts of things were going on, they would have featured them. Like we would have seen it. Thought would be all or nothing, good versus evil, us versus them dogma. There might have been a little bit of that, but again, I, it didn't seem like there was any more of that than like there is in a city, you know, like a sports rivalry. Encouraging only good and proper thoughts, thought stopping techniques. I personally didn't witness any of that. Again, like this is an outsider perspective. We're just watching a six part series on it. I wasn't there. Emotional is the last field. So feeling chosen or special guilt, manipulation, emotion blocking techniques, and phobia indoctrination. I'm not gonna really, s I can't confirm or deny any of that. I didn't see any of that again, but I did hear of some stories of people experiencing like abusive things, but it seemed like it was more of from a person. But if we're just looking at the documentary, I did not see these things. So according to Dr. Stephen Hassan's bite model, the garden is not a cult in my unprofessional opinion. Also, you could leave any time you wanted. It didn't seem any more culty than like my women's college that I went to, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes, culty things happen because you're in an isolated environment. So again, my unprofessional opinion, I don't know. I'm not a pro. I call myself unprofessional and everything, but I have been learning about cults for about six years, I would say, is when I really started researching them, specifically commercial cults, but religious as well and other kinds. So I can't call myself a professional by any means, but I have consumed a lot of podcasts, documentaries, YouTube deep dives, so on and so forth. All that to say I'm not speaking out of my ass, but I'm also not considered an expert myself. So when it comes to this kind of thing, do your own research to decide how you really feel. Watch the documentary for yourself. So what do you think? Do you think the garden is a cult or a commune? Did you watch the series? Leave me some comments. I'm super curious to hear what the thoughts and consensus are regarding this documentary series because I haven't seen a whole lot on it. But yeah, I saw them all over TikTok a few years ago. So I just thought it would be interesting to touch on this formerly viral topic. All right, subscribe to the channel and I will see you in the next one. Bye.